wafer lights. Everybody thinks that these wafer lights are the answer. Boom, I can throw them up. They're cheap. They're wonderful. They're easy to use. I can put them underneath a duct. They have no depth. There are still the same problems with recessed lights that there are with wafer lights. And that is the glare and the layout. You may have seen these lights out there. They're wafer thin. They can go up under ductwork. They cost a third of what recessed lighting costs. They're adjustable from 2000 Kelvin to up to 5000 Kelvin. They have dimmable options and they come with adjustable gimbals. They are the answer to everyone's problems when it comes to recessed lighting, right? Not exactly. No, 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 no. They come with some of the same design challenges as a regular recessed can. And I'm gonna run through some of the advantages and disadvantages of both and you can decide what works for your house. There are certain situations where this light is perfect. There are other situations where spend the money, do a recessed can because it might be worth it. So let's go through them. First thing is they're paper thin. They're like this. I can't tell you how many times I've been called to a job when there's a joist or there's duct work or there's something that has been stuck right where I designed the lights to go. And with recessed cans, you gotta move them. They have depth. Or you gotta go for a shallow housing, which usually doubles our cost. So the wafer lights, being as thin as they are, you can put them wherever you want, and that's wonderful. I mean, under a ductwork, in a basement, wherever you might have a challenge, where there's electrical, there's plumbing wires, this is a home run. They come with adjustable gimbals, just like a, a regular recessed can, some of them. They come in different sizes from eight inch, six, four, three, even little tiny two and one inch ones that you can use in a bookcase for a, a highlight or a spot on a piece of art, but those are really, they're not gonna give you much light. So the prices, the availability, and the ease of installation make these a no-brainer, right? But there are some limitations. First of all, they're not a recessed light. No, 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 no. A recessed light implies recession. Up, oh, recess, right? These lights are flush mount. They sit right at the ceiling, right there. You're gonna get that glow, that Swiss cheese hole in the wall. There's no way to minimize that with these lights. They are dimmable. So there it goes. That's fully dimmed. They're not as dimmable as a regular recessed can. With a recessed can, the bulb can sit up in, away from the surface of the ceiling. That way, when you turn the lights on, there's not that huge, hideous glow coming from your ceiling. It's up in there hidden, and it's just like this beam of light that's concentrating the focus on where it should be, on the object, and not on the ceiling and the glowing. Traditional recessed cans with a housing that goes up in the ceiling and then the trim kit and the bulb have come down dramatically in price because of LED bulbs. However, they're still gonna be two to three times more expensive than a wafer light. So what I would suggest in your house is to use them in different spaces. In places where the light is not gonna be visually distracting, use it, save the money. That way you can splurge on the better recess light where it's gonna show. The one that's got a more directional beam, the one that's got more expensive bulbs, the one that's got a prettier housing, the one that's smaller. You can get small ones that do the same work as a big one. They just cost more. The other big concern with these wafer lights is that once they die, once that bulb dies, the whole fixture is no good. So it's gotta be replaced. And then there's the concern that will it match the other lights that haven't yet died? So a recess can just get a regular bulb, get a different bulb, the fixture remains the same. With the wafer lights, once it starts to die, it dies slowly. It dims until there is no more, kind of like old age. Once it's dead for good, you cannot bring it back. There is no Frankenstein, there is no new bulb. You take the whole entire fixture out and you start over. So the concern is if one dies and I have to replace it in a year or two years or whatever 50,000 hours is, that that particular fixture won't match what you've got. And that's a big concern. You could buy extra, stash them away. Will it match the other fixtures or do you have to replace everything all at once? That remains to be seen. We'll see you at 50,000 hours. So here's my professional opinion. 
Use them, save the money, use them wherever you can, in a closet, in the basement, in places that don't visually matter, where you need task light. Even in places where you wanna save a little money, a playroom, a guest house, whatever. I'm all for it. You have to know what you're in for, that you may have to replace those, all those fixtures down the road and that you're gonna get the glow in the ceiling. So use them sparingly. With a traditional recessed can, you're gonna get so many more options. You're gonna get ways to hide the bulb, aperture lights that you can pinpoint light exactly where you want it from a 12 foot ceiling. You have way more options and that's why you pay more. So in those places where it counts, where it's a piece of art that matters or your fireplace or someplace that's, uh, use the recessed can. Where it doesn't matter, save the money because I've got light fixtures you could spend them on and they matter, they show. You've got to decide what's right for your budget. They are extremely budget friendly and in that way, I say go for them. But use them sparingly. They produce a lot of light. They're very powerful. When it matters to your budget, they're a great resource and I would highly recommend using them. When it matters visually, you got to go with the cans. It's just it's the way it is. In conclusion, wafer lights? What can I say? I'm a Pisces. If you're wondering how to lay out your lights, I have a video where I went through my plans and I show you how I did a lighting plan. If it helps, go watch. Thanks for watching. I've got a ripple soul.